Unforgettable stories out of Western Jamaica from the scrapbooks of Adrian Freita. When Nigel Josh Salmon escaped from the Tower Street Adult Correctional Center in Kingston in 1999, he went straight back to his home district, Cornwall Mountain in Westmoreland. And to the disappointment of residents, he started a new chapter in his reign of terror, which was temporarily disrupted when he was convicted and sent to prison on gun and shooting related charges. Back in Westmoreland, Joshua began terrorizing residents and extorting contractors on a major pipeline project which was passing through Cornwall Mountain. He insisted that if he was not given the job as head of security, the project would not be allowed to continue. To put the full range of his badmanship on display, he began to burn down the house of persons who he claimed to be police informers. In one terrifying case, a man who fled the community after Joshua burnt down his house was tracked down to his new home where he was shot four times and left for dead. The victim, 38-year-old character Kenneth Richards, was lucky to escape with his life. With Josh's reign of terror becoming increasingly brutal, top flight crime fighter Clive Karate Georgie Lawrence was assigned to track him down and bring him to justice. The then police commander for Era 1, Assistant Commissioner of Police Denver Freighter, told the residents in the affected community that Joshi was on borrowed time. However, Joshi proved to be much tougher than the police had seemingly anticipated as he encountered the police team that was led by Karate Jarji, but on each occasion he managed to escape after a gunfight. Buoyed by the fact that he had escaped and escaped from shootouts with the police, Joshi became increasingly brazen. To the surprise of many, he sent out a warning to Karachi Georgi, telling him not to come back to Cornwall Mountain or he would be killed. He reportedly bragged about wanting to engage Karate Georgi in a gunfight one on one. Karate Georgi was known to wear various disguises to include women's clothing to go after hardened criminals, did not take the threat from Joshi lightly. Over a period of several months, he created a network of trusted informants who he used to track the movements of the elusive gangster. According to him, the people them get tired of the boy man and then decide to cooperate to the police and to give him up. On Monday, July 15, 2001, Karate Georgie got a call from a trusted resident. According to the resident, Joshua was standing in the town square close to a building where workers were working on the pipeline were waiting to be paid their salaries. When Karate Georgie got the call, he was already on his way to Cornwall Mountain and was a mere five minutes away from the town square. Lawrence, who was heavily disguised, got into the square unnoticed by Joshi and walked up within touching distance of him. He reportedly called out, Joshi, I made this Karate Jaji. You still want the gunfight? However, on hearing the voice, Joshi spun around and began running while reaching for the firearm in his waistband. According to Lawrence, his plan was to take Joshi alive to prove a point. However, when the gangster pulled the illegal firearm from his waistband and pointed it in his direction, it turned out to be a fatal mistake as he was taken out in a heel of bullets. In this edition of Lest You Forget, I will be revisiting that story from a story I wrote for the Gleaner which was published on July 18, 2001 under the headline Josh's Reign of Terror Ends. The reign of terror of escaped convict Nigel Josh Salmon came to an abrupt end on Monday afternoon when he was killed in a shootout to the police in the Cornwall Mountain District in Westmoreland. Yes, I can sleep good in my bed tonight to the relief resident of the Cornwall Mountain District. According to the police, shortly after 12 noon, acting on information, a police team went into the Cornwall Mountain area where someone was spotted. An attempt was made to apprehend him, but he reportedly pulled a handgun and opened fire on the lawmen. During a running gun battle, the once elusive someone who had survived two previous shootouts of the police was shot and killed. A .38 revolver was reportedly taken from his body. Since escaping from the Tower Street Correctional Center in 1999, 
Salmon has been wreaking havoc in the Coral Mountain Cold Spring era of Westmoreland, burning down the houses of persons he did not like and shooting others. In looking back at the incident, Karate George said he was seriously offended by the threat that Joshi Salmon had said to him. Oh, a common boy if he has sent him the kind of threat to a big neighboring policeman like me, said Karate Georgie. In looking back at the Joshi Salmon and Karate Jaji saga, it is definitely one of those unforgettable stories out of Western Jamaica, especially for the residents of Cornwall Mountain in Westmoreland. Unforgettable stories out of Western Jamaica from the scrapbooks of Adrian Freuta. Before you go, please remember to subscribe.